Welcome to the fourth section of our course. Let me walk you through the content of this section very quickly. In this section, we will learn about affine and perspective transformations, stitching many images into panorama, removing defects from a photo with image in painting, finding corners in an image using Harris and FAST, computing descriptors for image key points using ORB. In this video, we will review two main ways to geometrically transform images. Number one is affine transformation and number two perspective transformation. To apply these transformations, we'll first open an image, we'll define two functions to implement the process of point selection. Next, we'll select three points in the image and then compute the affine transformation. Next, we'll select four points and compute the perspective transformation. And lastly, we'll visualize the results. The affine transformation is used to remove simple geometrical transformations such as rotations, scales, translations and their combinations, but it can turn converging lines into parallel ones. Here perspective transformation comes into play. It aims to eliminate perspective distortions when two parallel lines converge in perspective views. So let's dive right in. So first of all, we will import our modules, we'll read the image, We'll print its shape and then we'll store a copy of it. We'll preserve the image and only work on its copy. So let's run this. So our image is now loaded. Now let's define two functions to implement the process of point selection. So first of all, we'll create an empty array of selected points. This would hold the location of points on the image. Next. We'll define the mouse callback function and this would append the selected points array with the current location of our cursor on the image whenever the left button is up. That means the left button is clicked. This would also create a small circle on the image to let us know where we have clicked. Next, we'll define the select points function. In this function, we'll refer to the selected points array that we created earlier. We'll empty it if it has any values. We'll create a named window. Set a mouse callback on it that we just created. And we'll run a loop. In the loop, we'll keep on displaying the image. And we'll wait for one millisecond before updating the frame. We'll do that until the escape key is pressed or the length of selected points array would be equal to the points number. Points number would be an argument that we will pass in this function along with the image. Normally it would be 3 or 4. So let's run this block of code. In this block, we'll call the select points function that we just created. We'll pass the image and we'll pass number of points to be selected. So let's run this. So that shows us an image and we are going to select three points on this image. So the first point would go here, next one would be here and the last one would be here. So it's done now. Let's move back to our code. Okay, so for a fine transformation, we need to provide it with two parameters. The first one would be the source. And the next one should be the destination of the selected points. So the destination points would be these three points. The first point is the bottom left. The second one is the top left. And the third one is the top right. So let's run this. Next, let's go ahead and run the affine transformation function and we'll pass the source point and the destination points. Next. Let's go ahead and display the image on the screen. So here are the results. On the left side, you see the original image and our selected points on it. On the right, you see the transformed image. Let's move back to our code. This time, we'll be using perspective transformation. We will select four points in the image. So let's run this block of code. And in this block, we will select four points on the image and we'll also create the destination points in this very block. So let's run this. So here's our image. Our first point would be this one, next one over here, third one over here and the last one. 
at this corner. Let's move back to our code. Now let's transform the image with perspective transform function. Now let's go ahead and visualize our results. So as you can see our image is now neatly transformed. On the left side you see the original image and on the right side you see the transformed image using perspective transformation.